Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. I'm your host, J.K. Amazie, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. Welcome to the episode. Today we're going to be speaking about trauma, grief, and the coronavirus. Now, I know that many of us have been affected by the coronavirus, whether it is financially, in terms of our career, our mental health, our out-of-control behavior with pornography, our relationships. Everybody has been affected, some more than others. And unfortunately, some men are going through grief. Some men are finding themselves in a traumatic situation. This may sound strange because most men never identify themselves as individuals who struggle with trauma or grief. But we are going through an unprecedented time in human history and men who use pornography, sex and masturbation as a coping skill will find themselves at a disadvantage. So today we're going to identify some of the unique losses which are associated with the coronavirus. We're also going to explore some basic symptoms of trauma and grief as they relate to the coronavirus. And then we're going to identify different ways to address this trauma and grief. Uh, Let's just start by defining trauma. So a traumatic event, brothers, is any event that causes physical or emotional harm to a person directly or through seeing it happen to another person, right? In the case of the coronavirus, you may be an individual who has been affected by it directly, or you may have seen a loved one get affected by it. You know, coronavirus, cancer, influenza, car accidents, all these things will kill tens of thousands of people this year alone. Let me give you some basic statistics that might help or may not help, but either way, it's going to put things into perspective. Over 600,000 Americans will die of cancer this year. That's in the year 2020. And by the most recent statistics, 80,000 Americans died of the flu in 2018 alone. 38,000 Americans died from car accidents last year. That's in 2019. And 67,300 Americans died from drug overdoses two years ago in 2018. Now, the coronavirus seems a lot more traumatic for a lot more people because everybody is seeing it and experiencing it all day long. You can't turn on the news, you can't get on social media without coronavirus being brought up. And so if 40,000 people, 50, 60, 100,000 people die from it, it becomes more traumatic because all the people who are affected by it, not just dying from it, but the family members who are affected, the businesses that are affected, the way society is affected, we all see and we all experience that. And that's why the coronavirus is a lot more traumatic for many more people. So now that we've established what trauma is and how the coronavirus can be something traumatic for you, let's talk about how we can deal with the trauma that comes from it. The first thing to do is whatever feelings you may be experiencing right now, it is important to accept those feelings without judgment. I'll say it again. It's important to accept those feelings without judgment. Don't look at a feeling of pain or a feeling of sadness or a feeling of loss. Let's say feeling that you're not able to go to the gym, you're not able to go out to a park, you're not able to go out and socialize or dance or do the things that you love to things that brought you joy. Don't look at that negative feeling as a weakness, right? Sometimes you'll go on social media and you'll see individuals telling you that you shouldn't be weak or implying that you're weak if you're not, you know, hustling and becoming a better person during this lockdown. It's fine to feel down. It's absolutely fine to feel lost. Accept the fact that you're feeling it. Don't try to fight it. Next is identify the losses that you are experiencing or some of the thoughts which you've been having 
that actually trigger those feelings. So put pen to paper, as I like to say, and actually write down what are the things that I feel that I am losing out on, right? For instance, I'll share from my journal, I'm one of the losses that I'm experiencing right now is the inability to travel. I have two offices, one in Kansas and one in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm unable to travel. I'm unable to see clients. I'm unable to see a lot of my family and my loved ones. That's one of the losses I'm experiencing. Even though I'm introverted, I do enjoy going out and meeting people and just being around people, even though I'm not talking to them. And that's been hitting me really hard, just not being around people. So in your case, identify the losses that you're experiencing and those thoughts, the thoughts that you're having. Sometimes the thoughts could be, you know, I feel lonely or I'm afraid that things will never go back to normal or I'm afraid that whatever the new normal is, it's not going to work out in my advantage. I'm going to come out this coronavirus thing and step into a world that does not put me at an advantage any longer, right? Make sure that you're looking at the facts as you go through this reasoning, as you look at your losses and as you examine your thoughts. Also, look at the risk factor, right? So how much at risk are you or are your loved ones of actually getting sick as a result of the coronavirus? Take a look at your financial stability. What is the actual risk financially for you, for your family? Look at the the extremes. Like, are you at risk of being homeless at some point? Are you at risk of dying because your health is already compromised? So it is important to look at that. Next is examine the resources that you have available to you. Do you have access to some form of health care? Do you have access to loans? Do you have access to certain amounts of cash? Do you have a business that is still functioning? Are you able to save more money? So not just resources, brothers, but also the areas where you have control. There's one thing that I've noticed. There's this trend, and I don't want any of my podcast listeners to fall victim to this, where a lot of individuals are just spending online, like you're online and you're spending money as if things are going to be great moving forward. I believe that the trend is between the month of March last month and the end of May, individuals are going to be spending in a very, what's the word I would use for it, careless way without realizing that they may lose their job, without realizing that they may run out of cash, without realizing that one of their family members may get sick and their finances might get drained in the process of trying to save that person's life. So look at the areas of your life that you have control over. Can you save more money? Can you be a little bit more conservative? And if you're spending, are you spending on things which are an investment in your future or things which are going to help you in the present moment. Also, it's important to identify any past issues that your current situation with the coronavirus might be triggering. Is there a situation that you dealt with in the past that this reminds you of in a negative way, right? Also look at the reactions that you're having. What are your reactions to this situation? Address them individually. Are you angry? Are you looking for someone to blame? Like, are you blaming Bill Gates? Are you blaming the president? Are you blaming your governor? Are you blaming the Chinese, (laughs) right? (laughs) What are your reactions? Next, brother, it's important to be compassionate with yourself. And that means understand and be kind with yourself. Sometimes we are so hard on ourselves because our self-image is one of being in control or it's a self-image of not being in control right it's important to look at yourself and realize that you're a human being you have weaknesses you're not this rock that is impervious to the things that are happening in the world i know that you feel that you have to be strong for your partner or you might feel that you have to be strong for your family but you are human It's okay to understand that about yourself. Each time that you have a thought, 
about something which you cannot do. I want you to instead identify what you can do instead. This means that each time there's something that you feel like, man, I wish that I could make more money during this time. I wish that I could become a lot more social. I wish that I would be happier. I wish that I could find more productive things to fill my day with. So these are things you feel that you cannot do. List them out and actually start identifying what you can do. And sometimes we don't do this because we feel that what we can do is very limited. You'd be surprised at what you can do if you were just to sit down and put pen to paper, right? So brothers, in summary, the coronavirus has caused men to experience a combination of grief and trauma. Now, while there is no magic cure for trauma, and until we are able to start finding out what our new normal is, many men are going to continue to struggle with loss of control and lack of answers. But I want to let you know that you're not alone in dealing with this. And over the next few weeks, I'm going to be sharing in different podcast episodes different ways that you can deal with the uncertainty, the grief, the trauma, and the loss that is being brought on by the coronavirus. I'm not impervious to it myself. A lot of these things are things that I'm doing. I will say that if this was back in the day when I was still struggling with my out of control behavior with porn and masturbation, I don't think I'd be in a good spot at all mentally. So I feel for those of you who are falling back into your behavior with pornography, those of you who were rebooting and you were just starting to regain control of your behavior and you're suddenly faced with this unprecedented situation that might make your reboot a little bit more challenging than you anticipated, it's okay. I'm here for you. We're going to be providing you with tools over the next few weeks. Hang in there. Tomorrow, I'll be diving a little bit deeper into how to deal with grief and trauma. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. I'll speak to you tomorrow.